A streak of dirt gets on Elisa's perfect face. I got a few seconds to admire her before she takes her hands out of the dirt. She pulls out a few more weeds and tosses them into the growing pile. She whispers back. She wipes the back of her hand across her forehead, painting a new stripe of dirt. I laugh. She beams at me. That's so funny. I grin, pointing at the smudges. <laughs> you have a little dirt there. I move closer and gently touch her cheek. And there. She wipes her face. Is it gone? She smiles at me. I shake my head. Elise laughs and stands, brushing the dirt from her knees. I'll be back. Elise says, walking into the kitchen. I stretch out my back in the grass. Elise and I have become pretty good friends. At first we started gardening together. She was struggling with a bag of mulch a few days after her spread. She'd ask if I could help her with it. I said yes, and I haven't looked back. A few days later she asked if I'd help her with her garden again. It was awkward at first. There was too much talk about flowers and seed brands, with too many silences in between. I couldn't keep her talking, but that's Elise. She completely immerses herself in gardening. Her brow furrows and she gets lost in thought. I wonder how many times I cross her mind. She runs miles through mine. Elise's door slides open. She leaves her porch and shuffles through the grass. She kneels back down to me and hands me a paper cup of red wine. This is progress we've made. It started with a glass of water the first day. Then she made iced tea. Pink lemonade with fresh slices of lemon came next. A few weeks later, we graduated to wine. Elise thoroughly enjoys wine. I'm a white wine person, but I'd drink a thousand glasses of red wine if it meant I could spend time with Elise. It's hot out. I mop my forehead with my sleeve. Elise never sweats when she's gardening. It's because she's perfect. Perfect people don't sweat. Elise downs her first cup of wine in a matter of minutes and pours another. She never brought the bottle out for us before. She sips the cup slowly and tucks her feet under her legs. Hey, it's break time. Break time means you stop and, you know, take a break. Elise laughs. I grip my cup of wine. I need to make my hands occupied to prevent myself from touching her. I want to straighten her lopsided ponytail. I want to take her arms and kiss her with my wined lips. I need to kiss her. I'm going to kiss her. I'm not going to kiss her. <laughs> Touché. I say finish my wine. I clench my teeth from grimacing. I really don't like red wine. More? Elise asks. I nod, holding the cup out. She happily refills it. So, when do I get to help you with your garden? Do it now. I shake my head. I'm not ready. Oh, okay. Elise shrugs her shoulders. I, I didn't I didn't mean today. Just whenever you need an extra pair of hands. The blood drains from my face. The other self cackles softly in my ear. Don't lose your opportunity. Sorry. Of course you didn't mean today. I smile and drink the rest of my wine. Ask her now. I swallow the lump of fear in my throat, wash it down with wine. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do... I can. I can, and I will. How about, uh, next time we join forces? We do it at my house, I'll throw some fish on the grill, introduce you to the wonders of my white wine. As for the rest of the evening, we could play it by ear from there. I feel a shy, sly smile escaping my lips. I want to stand up and run in the opposite direction. My demon spoke through me. <sighs> when was he able to do that? You're a coward. I have to do everything for you. That sounds great. I just... I hate to make this awkward, but do you mean, like, a dinner date? Please look softly at me. I sit up to meet her gaze. My heart melts. If, uh, if that's what you want to call it, then, uh, yes. That sounds awesome, and I'd love to. But while I am flattered, I can't call it a date. You know, I'm, I'm in a relationship. I've told you this many times before. She raises her eyebrows at me. My heart drops to my stomach, through my toes, into the earth. Deep down to the core, I don't think I'll be able to dig it out. You can't, but I can. Sorry, uh, I know, I just... Uh, I thought it might be fun. My voice cracks on the last word. I clear my throat. So you guys, uh, pretty serious then, huh? I ask casually. 
At least bites her lip smiling. Yeah, I, I definitely say so. We've been together for a little over nine months now, and... She hesitates, chewing her lip more. And... I don't know, I think this relationship is going places. She tells me more about my enemy. I can only listen for so long before I have to tune her out. It's too painful, yet I can't ask her to stop. Her voice is like listening to wind chimes. It's calming, beautiful. Instead, I think of the times she's called me a very good friend. Very good friends climb the ladder to special friend. They climb until they reach the top, reserved for the lover partner. This can't be the end of my story. She's my only destiny. There is hope. I focus my attention back on Elise. I can see myself marrying him. I feel like when you know, you know. Is that crazy? She looks at me with hopeful eyes. <laughs> it's not crazy. I knew I wanted to marry her the minute I saw her. It hasn't been long, but that's the feeling he gives me. Lee says, closing her eyes. I see myself walking down the aisle in the white dress and veil, and I don't feel scared. I never thought of marriage like that before. Of course, I could never tell him that, or I might take off running. She laughs. I'm happy I have you to talk to. Elise pats my arm softly and sighs. I force a smile. I can see yourself marrying my enemy. This cannot be. It must be a dream. No, not a dream. More like a corrupted nightmare. There's no hope. We must create our fate. We'll take her heart before it's too late. Don't be stupid. There is hope. Don't be stupid. There is hope. I shake my head. No. No. There's no hope. 